All right, guys, let's get started here. We're running a little bit late because of the keynotes, but I want to get this moving along. We might go a little bit over to give the speakers their full 25 minutes, and then afterwards we'll have a panel discussion where we'll have, have ask questions. Or, uh, I'll ask for questions from the audience. If I don't have any, I will uh, force you to ask questions or offer up questions. So let's get let's get on with the, this session is AEC and VDC. We're really excited because I think you're going to see some very interesting um, different uses of technology uh, that haven't really been discussed here or should be, so we're kind of looking forward to it. My name is Chris Jaski from the uh, SPAR Advisory Board. I've actually been on the advisory board, I think, longer than anybody else. I think they're probably going to officially retire me eventually, but I'm back again. Uh, so I'll be moderating the session, and uh, let me, let's just start off with the first presentation, which is the applications with drones, mobile devices, 3D metrology, and the Matterport um, virtual reality. So Paul Tice is the uh, founder and CEO. Uh, actually, he calls himself the chief experience officer of uh, TOE PA 3D. Uh, Paul Tice's background includes implementing best practices and workflows of various 3D reality data capture technologies. Um, Tice draws from over 26 years of military and uh, civilian experience in mapping, uh, in field operations, CAD, GIS, and cadastral survey projects. Uh, having published several articles in industry uh, trade magazines, Paul has appeared in the Oregon Business Journal, <coughs> The Daily Journal of Commerce and Sparpoint News, which you probably, if you follow their website, you'll see some of his articles and other things uh, accomplished in there. In 2011, uh, Tice won the International Be Inspired Award from Bentley Systems uh, in the Netherlands for his work with uh, point cloud visualizations. So let's give a, well, a warm welcome to uh, Paul Tice, who's going to be our first presenter. Am I loud? I am. Hi, I'm Paul Tice with Topa 3D, and uh, I'm going to come to you today as a user. Uh, a lot of you guys and gals out there have used the software and have hoped that the hardware and the software had performed as you had been told it would. Uh, sometimes that's true, and sometimes it's not always true. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to go through different software platforms, I do the trials, and I try to be a little agnostic in our approach when we provide services to our clients. This is our company. Uh, we've been in business for three and a half years. Uh, it's been uh, quite a road. If anybody in here has been business owners, uh, you know that it can have its ups and downs, especially when you're trying to work with budgets and all of the things with large software capital purchases. What I want to talk about is my life very briefly in 10 slides, so you get to know who I am, and then we're going to move on. Is that okay? Number one. Number two, these are the influences of my childhood. Number three, what I did in high school. A lot of bottom one, a lot of that. I was a tanker. I like science, backpacking, global stuff, mapping. This is a book that changed my life and my direction. I went into geology in school. This is my love of my life. She's a hottie. She's a hospice nurse, so she is a midwife to the next life, as we like to say. And we got all these little ones around. That's a lot of little ones. So, what I did when I created Topa 3D is I decided to take what I loved and I sat down with uh, things that I knew already. I decided to start blogging under Topa 3D. It was just an obscure name. It actually was my friend Todd and myself, Paul. So we put them together and everybody says, oh, is that like topography or something? And I'm like, yeah, that, that's it. You got it. And then we started networking just to develop the business model. And uh, this is one of the fruits of our labor uh, to date. We got into the drone mapping world. Uh, I'm going to be talking about mapping with drones, doing different cinematography things with drones, and then I'm going to talk about the scanning aspect and how you can take this uh, data and put it in the cloud uh, and work with it there. And then finally, I'll finish off with Matterport and development in that area uh, as far as point cloud visualization. So this is a video. It won't take the whole time. But just sit back and watch.
an interesting thing because what we couldn't do five years ago, we can completely do with these uh, aerial vehicles, these unmanned aerial vehicles and systems. Some of the projects that we've done in, in that previous video, this, this showcase here, uh, it, it, it spans a large range of things. This uh, particular uh, video that I, you just saw there where we're sort of panning across a building was for developers in downtown Portland. And what we do from that is we, we took some photos and videos from that space and we just created an ortho mosaic. And all that is is just a showcase. Uh, it's not a true ortho mosaic actually, it's just a mosaic. But we're just showcasing what the property would look like uh, if they built it. So this is uh, a skyscraper that's going to be it's not fully here yet. I might have a bad connection. That's all right. We're going to talk through it. So uh, that, that, that's what I love about this stuff is there's a lot of applications for it. And when we're doing this, we're, we're getting paid to fly uh, remote control vehicles. That's kind of exciting. And we're also able to ship them to you from those different vantage points if they chose to build the building there. In the previous video, we saw uh, a lot of different uh, point cloud applications that were created from the UAV from photogrammetry. And the software is so fast now that you can actually, you know, just plug and play. You can take the geotag images, put them into Pix4D or Agisoft, and you hit a button, and it's actually putting those together. Accuracy is another, you know, sort of level to that, as you all know, using uh, AT and solutions and stuff like that. I'm sure there's photogrammetrists, photogrammetrists in the room. Uh, but just to get the visualization and the context of the space, it's so fast, it, it doesn't take time at all. You want to switch out? Okay. And so, I'm going to talk this way. We're also taking geotagged images um, that are from uh, the uh, UAV, and we're uh, taking those and putting them directly on Google Earth. There's some open source apps, uh, this is Mapalage, that takes those um, images and actually can embed them on Earth as a KML file. And that's open source, so it's free. Uh, this gives you the ability to showcase uh, what's happening in, in large regions. What we're working for right now is a group called Roseburg Forest Products out in uh, Oregon. That's where I'm from, Portland. And uh, they can simply see how the ice damaged their fields. They have um, about 500,000 acres of Douglas fir monocrop in their area. And the way they survey that still to this day is they go on the ground, boots on the ground, and they walk about 80 acres a day with a little iPhone. And they're taking pictures. You'd think, I'm, I'm sure all of us here would think, really? You know, like, 